We're um today at the Rock House. We welcome the Duke, Rich Ward from the band Fozzy, who are about to embark on their Australian tour. Rich, how are you, man? It's an honor and a privilege to be here. Thanks for uh, spending time with me today. It's great. It's a yeah. day after our holiday of Thanksgiving, so I'm gonna I'm gonna send all my thanks to you, sir, for taking your time with me. <laughs> well, I hope you had a good uh, Thanksgiving day, and I could see my cowboys got up. So you beauty. Yes. Yeah. Today, yeah. listen, uh, it was a big day for uh, football today too. Uh, for uh, America versus uh, England, zero zero. I was like, "What's going on?" We were supposed to take a royal beating today, and we uh, we yeah, hooded, we hung in there with the not not. Yes, <laughs> the US have always performed quite well at football, though, man. So, you know, take it, take it, going against. That's because uh, we we send all our players over to Europe to be trained properly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, mate, you look like you're in the studio. Is that right? Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, I mean, this is my home studio. This is where I've I've taken uh, every dime of royalties that I've made over the, the last ten years in the studio in my house, and um, it's it's for for Jericho and myself. It's been uh, kind of a necessity because with his schedule as it is we can't do traditional studio time. It's not like we can book three weeks in a studio and go in and make a record, you know, two days a week, he's on the road wrestling. He's got two podcasts. Um, yeah. He's constantly on movie sets and there's yeah. so much, and he's a father of three and uh, so on and so on. And, and I'm like the, uh, the loyal soldier who I built my entire life around just Mr. Joe, be yeah. available. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it really comes down to if you're going to have um, any type of partnership and one person in the partnership is crazy uh, with their schedule and um, you have to have the other person that just has to be available. Um, yeah. And it's great. I My wife and I didn't have kids um, and we didn't structure our life where it's complex. And what it makes me available to do is to be basically like uh a marine sniper where they can call you up and in 10 minutes you'll be on a plane and be at your yeah. destination and do the job, you know, and that's, yeah. that's been my life for 25 yeah. years. We are of course talking about Chris Jericho, uh, co-founder of the band Fuzzy. Um, yeah. He must be such a workaholic though. It must be such a privilege to work with someone like him. Who's just a hundred percent all the time working flat out. It is. It's an honor. He's a constant inspiration for me because he has, a motor unlike anything I've ever seen. He, yeah. he rarely sleeps. He's constantly working. Um, we've gotten to the point now where he has his own dressing room, not because he needs privacy, because he's constantly working. He yeah. constantly is on phone calls, on Zoom calls uh, for his own podcast. Like yourself, he's, he has to have a, 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 a room for him to be able to just do business. Um, yeah. and interviews and it's and it's been an honor to see that because I don't have that motor I'm different um I get yeah. off on making music and practicing and the little subtleties where he's big grand gestures and big movements and I'm the mechanic who spends time <laughs> underneath the car tinkering with things yeah. um and then he gets behind the wheel and drives the shit out of it and and we yeah. make a great team yeah yeah, look, a fantastic team. It all started back in 1999. How did you meet Chris and decide to start this fantastic band, Fuzzy? Um, I met him backstage at a WCW wrestling event. Um, I was friends with some other co-workers of his that I had worked with uh, in my previous band, Stuck Mojo. And when I met Chris backstage... Um, he was like, I've seen your band before. I saw you guys open for Testament last year on tour. I love you guys. You guys are really cool. And he said, I was afraid to come backstage and meet you because I was afraid maybe you didn't know who I was. But I was a huge wrestling fan. And of course, I knew who he was. And I was a fan. Um, we struck up a great conversation and then a great friendship um, based on kind of mutual as, um, admiration for the same bands and the same style of music. And we eventually decided that we must 
I had a little jam band in Atlanta called Fozzy Osborne, which was kind of a vehicle for all local Atlanta musicians to get together occasionally and play Priest and Maiden and Scorpions and Accept and Ozzy. It was like a it was just a fantastic kind of heavy metal jam band where you'd on a Friday night twice a year, we'd we'd gig and play, you know, our favorite songs. And then I said, Chris, you should you should be our guest front man for this band. And then uh, the f- first show was fantastic. And we knew it was a marriage that was meant to be. And we never looked back. Mate, the guy's got some serious pipes on him as well. You know, he, his voice works so well with, with the stuff that you're doing. He's fantastic. And he his voice never breaks down. It's yeah. uh, with the exception of he had an injury wrestling recently, but was it because he was singing? It was literally because he was karate chopped in the throat, <laughs> which <laughs> it's not like a singer who spends time on tour and uh, has ends up with vocal damage or, you know, needs to take time off. For, you know, this was literally a physical injury that he had to heal up. But, but in the 25 years that I've known Chris, he's never had any issues with his voice and, but there's lots of great singers. What makes Chris special is his um, ability to connect with an audience. He yeah. understands when he stands on that stage that anyone can sing notes and say words. It's how to communicate those notes and those words with an audience that makes you great. I mean, Tom, yeah. nobody accused Tom Petty and Lou Reed of being the greatest singers, but they were incredible communicators and they told stories and they – they they built um a, a, you know they built a relationship with the audience and that's what Chris is fantastic at uh, beyond his abilities and and I think that that's that's his secret weapon you know he always would love to say hey I'm you know I'm a great singer but yeah of course you are but that's step one right like to say I to some, somebody says you're a great guitar player great well that gets you to the starting line. OK, and now all the great guitar players stand on the starting line and those that excel are the ones that are willing to put in the work, the ultimate dedication, never go on family vacations. I mean, literally abandon a normal life and say, like a sailor, I'm going to go and I'm going to get on this boat and I'm not coming back. Um, and this is just the life of the musician. It's a, a marriage to this this passion that we have. Um, and Chris is married to that in the same way that I am. And I think that's why this relationship has lasted like it is, is because although we we are two sides of the same puzzle piece, we kind of fit perfectly in that we are very different in um, in our skill sets. But it is a it is a fantastic compliment. To- yeah. Yeah. And um, anytime someone says, how does that work? It was like, well, it, it's the same way that it works with any great coupling, um, whether it's Keith and Mick or, or any of the greats. Like we're not in that category, but our formula works in the same way in that yep. that when these two guys are apart, they're not as strong as they are when they're together. And there's something it's like chemistry. It's doubles tennis. I mean, that's yep. really what. It's, it's sports. Put the best squad on the team. You could have one star, but if the star doesn't work well with the other players, you're not going to win any games. And right. and the older right. I get, the more I realize chemistry, chemistry, chemistry. You, it's how many times have we seen a band that comes out with a new lineup and you're like, I mean, it's good, but something's missing. And and it's not about talent. It has nothing to do with that. It's really how these people complement each other and how they work well together. Yeah. It's a classic case of one plus one equals three there, Rich. Amen, well, sir. I'm a, the- I'm a true believer in that. And that's in yeah. any relationship, that's marriages right. and friendships and coworkers. It, it is, it is the rule of life. Not, you know, not how great am I, how great are we unless you're a golfer and then, <laughs> and then good luck on you, you know, <laughs> And work and dedication, very good advice for any aspiring musician out there. It's the most important thing. I always tell people a, a million times, like, I can go into any guitar center, any music store in Atlanta, and there's five kids setting a fretboard on fire. Incredible players. They'll never make it because yeah. they don't like the idea of being uncomfortable. Uh, homelessness. 
I, I was homeless for five years. Oh, wow. Lived, no running water, no bathroom, just couch hopping, living in my rehearsal space. But I never looked at it. Like later, people would say, you mean you were homeless? I was like, oh, I guess I was. I never equated it as that. We had a 1977 van. Stuck mojo when we first started. Our manager just put us on the road. And when we came home for three and four day stretches, we slept on the floor of our rehearsal space on little mattresses we had. Um, but we never looked at it as struggling because there was this goal. And we all thought, well, this is what everybody else does. This is the right to pass a uh, uh, passage to this. We hear the stories. It's the behind the music. It's everybody's story. You don't hear about the five rich kids whose parents sent them to Juilliard or Berkeley School of Music where they all succeeded together. That's that's the that's the exception. You no, know, the, the rule is five people who are willing to do anything. They, that's it's the age old Ozzy Osbourne Black Sabbath. We sold our soul for rock and roll. It's a cliche, but it's true. It's it's what is reared to. And it's the same thing if you want to be a professional footballer or a professional cricketer or whatever sport you want to do. If you want to excel and, and be an elite top athlete or top musician, the talent is just a, such a small part of it. Yeah. I mean, it it's like saying I can. Yeah, it's like I have a good vocabulary. I can type fast. But can you tell a story? Can you write a book? Those are the things that people care about. It, it's the communication. Your vocabulary just gets you in the door. It's then how do you exercise that vocabulary to write poems, to write songs, to write books and novels and screenplays. And that's what separates the, the wheat from the chaff. And I'm, again, I'm, I'm a work in progress. I'm still constantly trying to be a better version of myself. Not because I desire to have a, nicer car or a bigger swimming pool because my heroes were Eddie Van Halen and Zach Wilde and Randy Rhodes and George Lynch and Geezer Butler. I love Don't forget music. Mick Jones. These are my heroes growing Mick up. Mick Jones is one of the fans as well. No, God. <laughs> Dude, that's the thing about it is, is that like when I grew up in America, the bands that were on the radio, the first introduction to rock music, Foreigner, Boston, Rush, Journey. Styx, Ted Nugent, Journey, ACDC, Kansas. These were the bands that were that owned the FM airway and they, they yeah. changed my life. And that's why I still go back to this that period of the late 70s, early 80s. Um, not only did it shape who I was, but it also shaped it music it for generations to come. Right. It was this, it was music. like, yeah. They were astronauts, you know, they were, they were the, I, I, I realized the generation before them of the, the late sixties, those, those explore, you're talking about for rock and hard rock music, obviously the Stones and the Beatles. Uh, and then after them came the Kinks and the Who, but for me, when, when the melodic rock and roll started to find its voice where it was melding with pop hooks, but still kept its aggressive rock and roll edge, like, like, like you said, Journey. Yeah. Those songs will always be on the radio. They will always be on TV. They will always be on in movies oh. because it, they're magic. They're mo it's ELO. Um, these are incredible bands that will yeah. always be part of the pop lexicon. What was not Don't Stop Believing the most downloaded song ever? Yeah, still is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have an 80s tribute band uh, called Guardians of the Jukebox. I play it every night. You have to. We, we, yeah. we, we, we end the set with don't stop believing, jukebox hero. Oh. I mean, the best one-two punch in all of music. Lee it's Fuzzy incredible. Man, I turned that band down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's the beautiful thing about having two in, uh, completely different styles of bands is that on one side, I've got Riff Machine with this quintessential heavy metal hard rock front man and then i've got this incredible 80s tribute band which yeah. i treat just like i wrote the song so many of these 80s bands they um for them it's like um it, it's a, a a little bit of like ha 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 i play it completely straight this is the greatest catalog of all time and even when i play um wang or everybody have fun tonight by wang chung i play it like it's the greatest song ever written yeah i mean it's it's uh, we put you know we 
Yes, it is. Everybody <laughs> have fun tonight. It's I want it on my gravestone. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's talk about the tour you kick off in brisbane on november 30 uh december 2 in melbourne three in sydney and four in adelaide that's a lot of travel in a you know four or five days mate uh, the travel's the easy part it's it's you, you know you you wake up you travel to a new town you have a coffee at a brand new place you've never had before you find a really great spot for lunch you scout out your dinner selections. You know, you take a little uh, late afternoon nap to get ready for the show. Catch twenty minutes with a backpack underneath your head in the dressing room. Um, yeah. I, I, I love. I love. This is the greatest business of all time. It, it's only hard if if you decide that it's hard. You know what's hard? Being a roof fur in Arizona in July. That's that's hard. You know, being a plumber. And uh, playing guitar for a living is a is a gift. It's 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 the greatest privilege ever. And traveling to different cities and sleeping in a different bed in a different hotel. It's exciting. Who doesn't want to do that? Who doesn't yeah. want to live that life? It's fantastic. Yes. Do I miss my wife? Of course, I miss my wife. But guess what? It's not 1995 anymore where I have to find a payphone, you know, at 2 a.m. and some, you know, it's, it's high street. Now I can just do like you and I are doing. We can talk every day. Yeah. Um, it yeah. makes life a lot easier. And um, and that's another reason why I didn't have kids, because I knew that's the hardest part for people, you know, because eight year old kids don't understand why mom or dad's not there. It's it's a thing that you can't process. It, it must be very difficult and i just said um yeah i don't want to do that um and i'm you know i want to like i said when i'm waking up in brisbane my first thing to do is pull up a you know an app and find out where i'm going to have coffee this morning and find this adventure and i've made friends in so many cities sometimes i just have a meet up with somebody that i've met previous or i go to a music store look at guitars do a little guitar shopping and it's a wonderful wow. life i've i live and it's um and it's it's partly due to building relationships with an audience, uh, but part of it is is just connecting with people. Same way that um, when bands that I looked up to was connecting with me, and I slept on the sidewalk outside the venue before there was, you know, when everything was general admission and first person in line got to get front row, and I got to see Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and all my all my favorite bands when I was a teenager, I, I like. This and I just I want to honor that by building the same types of relationships and leaving it all out there on the on the stage. And it's a great privilege to do this. And I'm I'm really excited. Australia, it's kind of like if you said to an American kid growing up, one day you'll get to go to Mars. And I'd be like, Yeah, that's more reasonable than I'm gonna be in a rock band touring in Australia. <laughs> and I, it just seems so ridiculous I, that that I'm going to these incredible places, um, meeting incredible people and playing music for them. Yeah. So this tour is a fantastic. The the promoter is a, a longtime friend. Um, and I, I just when you build relationships with people, you know, there's a guy named John Howarth and obviously Danny, the, our, our promoter. You build yep. these relationships with people. And when you show up you know you it's like friendly faces and you know these people and it, it means a lot it makes things easier too you know when you've got a wingman to go get coffee with sometimes it's even more fun or you want to go you have a day off and we have a day, day off in sydney on the on the uh on the fifth so i'm gonna go to the sydney zoo i'm so excited like i take every opportunity to live life to its fullest Mate, that's such a positive perspective after you hear so many talk about, you know, how hard it is on the road. So that's a really good perspective. Yeah. You know what's hard is like losing your business because of COVID. Uh, like that's hard. You know what I mean? Like having cancer, that's hard. You know what's not hard is being in a band, doing what you've always dreamt of doing and touring. It's so lame when I hear bands complain. And I know because it is hard. Like, Life is hard, but in perspective, it's just keeping things in perspective. Yeah, I mean, our last tour of the UK, we had some crazy experiences. Our, we just had some crazy stuff. Like, we even had a run-in with the freaking Scottish Mafia. Stuff happens. But that's the stuff that, like, that's the stuff that, like, 
at the time seems crazy and you're scared to death. Like, am I going to be yeah. murdered? Can we get out of Glasgow city <laughs> limits without being killed? And then you think, I mean, once you get out of the city limits, everybody's laughing their heads off because you're like, did that just happen? <laughs> like, this is who, who, what, on what planet does this happen to normal people? It's fantastic. Yeah. And, um, you know, and that's why when you listen to Ozzy Osbourne tell these great stories oh. about the, the things that have just happened to him, you know, most of most musicians, all their tales are self-inflicted, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, cause yeah, hey, we're not, we're not Elon Musk. We're not scientists. We're dummies that play yeah. instruments. <laughs> get up this we can't get out of our own way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mate, it's going to be remiss of me if I don't bring up the song Judas. You know, Chris has really taken that song to level. Has that really given a lot of new, new fans to the band with Chris coming out every week to the, to the song Judas? Yeah. It changed everything for us. Um, you know, it, it changed things in terms of we, we started. It's amazing what television means. Uh, you don't realize it until the last time we, we, did, we, we did a tour on, with Soundwave, the Soundwave tour. I can't remember what year it was. Yeah, it was Maybe it was 17. Two, yeah. What year was that? Do you remember? 2013. 2013. Okay. Was, yeah. And, and our off our off our side shows that we did, we, we co-headlined with uh, Duff McKagan's Loaded. And so um, occasionally we would go do things. They would, both bands would be there. We'd go in to get something and it's Chris Jericho and Duff McKagan. Everybody came up to Chris Jericho and see, nobody came up to Duff McKagan because Duff McKagan's not on TV. You don't yeah. realize the difference. Now we're rock and rollers. So Duff McKagan is royalty. Element yeah. of rock yeah. and roll, it's, like he's you know he's up there with the grip but he's not on tv every week and you realize that when you've had that type of exposure over the course of 30 years on television that chris has he's been on dancing with the stars he's been in movies you just don't realize the notary he can't go through an airport without taking twenty five thousand selfies which is great because then when judas became his entrance music, all of that started yeah. notoriety started to fall in the band. Um, and all of these wrestling fans then became aware of our songs. Um, and it took too because I'm a co-writer. Song, and so all of a sudden I see in the mailbox in like, and it's incredible because I've never had a hit before. So I always just, I'm a working class musician. I go, I play a concert. I make a little bit of, of money i said like a little bit of money and all of a sudden because of judas being this big hit all of yeah. a sudden now i'm experiencing what a lot of other artists are experiencing and that you, now you're selling albums and you're getting royalties from television and radio and it's it's fantastic because it's really afforded me to buy more guitars and which this whole room is filled with and more studio equipment it's not like i it's not like I built a big house. I just put more crap in the current house I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, getting to use a new theme and maybe Army of One for the new album, Boombox, is the new theme song, mate, to make you get even more guitars, maybe. <laughs> yes, it would be wonderful because I love guitars. It's my it's my unhealthy addiction. Yeah. Now you've got such a, a wide range of music with seven or eight fuzzy albums out. How do you decide a set list for this Australian tour? I kind of leave that up to Chris um, and uh, Jericho. Uh, and part of that just comes down to he he really likes to visualize the show and how he likes to pace things, um, not only just vocally, but he has some set pieces. We have some some special effects that we use, some set certain kind of production moments, and he likes to have them staged at certain points of the set. So when we rotate out, songs to make room for new songs obviously it's a tough decision uh, and a lot of that comes down to hey what songs are resonating with fans you and then also there comes the ones where we say wow these were real fan favorites that weren't big on the radio but they react well they're great live songs they just got a certain energy 
And so I, Chris just kind of goes through and picks those. I mean, he always asks for opinions, but he has such a – because he's the guy who's basically conducting the orchestra, he has a really good feel of the rhythms of the of the show. Um, and I think he's probably the best guy to, to do that. So that's it, that's been his job. And he's passionate about it because he's obsessed with everybody, other all these other bands set list. Every time Iron Maiden's on tour, he's online checking to see what's the set list. What have they moved in? What have they taken out? So it's kind of a, for him, it's like looking at the strategies of other bands and how are they balancing their sets? And how is other bands, the Rolling Stones, are they utilizing new catalog or are they sticking just to classics? And it's it's an interesting look to see, hey, how are the greats of all time? structuring their sets not to mean you have to copy them but it's a nice to look at people who are way more successful than you and look at them for some guidance yeah wow well he's uh he, he does all of that in his spare time does he yeah yeah well you know for on plane rides right <laughs> <laughs> uh look one final question i know you're a busy man uh rich What's next in the world of Fuzzy? After this tour, what are you guys doing? I know you've got the Save the World tour. Can we expect a new album out soon? Well, the first thing we're going to do is I have a, a writing session set up with our producer the uh, third week of December, right before Christmas. Um, and we have a new song that we've been working around. So our first goal is to really develop this new song idea and possibly just do a standalone single in between album cycles really just because we're all excited about this song. Um, yeah. And it, it it's one of those things on, on Boombox, we put out Nowhere to Run as the first single, not yeah. knowing that the pandemic was going to shut the world down for this period of time, which delayed the release of the album. So Nowhere to Run came out a, a year and a half before the album did, and it was on the same album. And we, we it actually was nice because it allowed us this opportunity to have something out there that was flying the flag of Fozzy while we worked on the new album. Um, so I don't really know specifically the talk is um, a single and maybe a, a, an EP of some more aggressive music. We've been talking about, it'd be really cool to do kind of a back to the basics, what Metal has done where they've kind of gone back and, really kind of tapped into the kind of aggressiveness that they were really channeling earlier in their career. We're just mm. excited about trying all things. I mean, we're, we're kind of in a lucky position in that um, we have a loyal fan base and they seem to be just up for everything. And I, we don't want to stray too far off the path because I don't want to reinvent and all of a sudden put out a Pink Floyd record or, go super prog we know who we are but as long as as long as something whatever we're doing feels like fozzy and feels like something that feels genuine from us not something manufactured to try to fit into what's going on or to try to um chase something that's a new trend we know who we are it's not like we're um young explorers that um are just kind of new to the industry we you know we've put out a lot of albums and and they've They've been a little all over the board. I mean, Chasing the Grail was a yeah. very aggressive record, and yet it had a single on it that was kind of country rock. It was really strange. Like we, 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 and part of that is just Chris and I's desire to try things. Uh, our heroes are our Iron Maiden and David Bowie, just groups that just tried things. They weren't afraid to, to you know, not not neighbors were doing, but just find new versions of ourselves that felt like. Yeah they were they were still within the confines of who we are as a band and it's exciting you know to feel like you don't have to adhere to a, a strict formula yeah yeah it's really good that you do try new things like you've done the best ever cover ever in sos of do you want to start a war so big kudos to that. <laughs> i love that song like oh, I do that was like one of the I was so afraid when I asked Chris, I was like, what do you think about doing SOS by ABBA? And he was so crazy in love with the idea that we were high-fiving. We hadn't even like, we didn't, nobody even even tried doing anything with it. Just conceptually, it seemed so perfect. Um, you know, and part of it is, is just like our cover of uh, Relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Yeah. These yeah. are songs that feel like they, like, a lot of great songs could be a country song or they could be a metal song. A great song can 
can take on different personalities when the core of it um, is is fantastic. I mean, ABBA did all the hard lifting for us. They wrote a great song. All we yeah. had to do is just kind of is add our own little flavors to it. It was yeah. a recipe that was perfect. We just had to spice it a little differently for our palates. Yeah. Rich, you're obviously a fan of Australia. I think this is about the fourth or fifth time you've been down, right? Yeah. Yes. What, what's your final message to your loyal following down here? Well, if, um, if, if, in a, in a different life, I would move to Australia. And part of it is, is that um, Australia feels a lot like America to me in, in the way that uh, the, the culture, people, very similar. People are so friendly. Where I live in Atlanta, there's the thing called Southern hospitality. It's a thing where you wave to your neighbors when they come out of the house or when yeah. you drive by and your neighbors raking leaves, they wave. There's, there's yep. something about a, the community. And I find that to be a very familiar in Australia. There's a friendliness, um, a neighborliness to it. And, and people are very nice. And, uh, and I love the weather. Um, I'm just a, I love beaches and I love sunshine. Uh, I like to be outdoors. So, um, you know, it's got that California climate with yeah. the Southern hospitality. It's like this perfect storm of great attributes. And uh, I love visiting there. And of course, my favorite band of all time, ACDC is from there. So um, yeah. it's, it's, it's an honor to, to be there. And I think the fans are fantastic. And it could just be that it's, it could just be that we've made this connection because Chris, as a wrestler, had a connection there. And then our music as a byproduct started to connect with people. Or it just could be that they're the best rock fans on the planet. And it just, it, the connection was, we were the right band at the right time. But every time we come over, it's always so much fun. And so much, you know, soccer chants in between every song. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Fuzzy, fuzzy. And it's just, it's fantastic. The atmosphere is incredible. And I'm just so excited. I mean, I really am. I'm, uh, I'm leaving on, so we fly out on Sunday, which is uh, today in America is uh, Friday. So Brilliant. I've got another day to pack. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I'm excited. Oh, that's fantastic. We do love our rock down here, but we also love our fuzzy. So all the best of luck with the tour, mate. It's been an absolute Thank pleasure you. to be here. And uh, looking forward My to seeing you. My privilege. Thank you. Thank you Thanks, so much. It's been a real privilege. And thanks for your time today. It's been incredible. Yeah, thanks, Rich. All the best on the tour, mate. And uh, hopefully you'll get in some beach and some sun. I hope I'll have a chance to shake your hand. Are you going to be able to make it to the, any of the shows? Mate, um, I'm based in Perth, unfortunately. Oh, tour, yes. Uh, I, I did book tickets. By, to by the way, my favorite city. By the way, my favorite city in Australia. It uh, mate, it's fantastic. You, you are more than welcome to come and have a cold lemonade and a burger at my place anytime you're over here. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you so much. Thanks, I hope we'll Rich. get out your way soon. It's nice to speak with you, Josh. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.